this one we are discussing the things further from non applicability or tra to a transaction between the holding and its wholly owned non applicability to a transaction between a holding and its wholly owned subsidiary company it is also provided that the provision a of this clause that the same shall not apply to a transaction other than the transaction jo bhi referred kiye gaye hain uh other than the transaction which is referred to in section 188 between a holding company and it is wholly owned subsidiary company scrutiny kya hoga of inter corporate loans and investment how there will be the valuation of undertaking or assets of the company wherever it is necessary evaluation kaise hoga internal financial control and risk management systems ke beech mein monitoring the end use of fund raised through public offer and related matters then comes the what will be the rights of audit committee ke rights kya honge and on such thing jo bhi audit committee hai may call for the comments of the auditor about internal control system the scope of audit including the observations of the auditor it shall have the right to review the financial statements before their submission to the board it may also discuss any related issues with internal and statutory auditor and the management of the company जो ऑडिट कमेटी होगी इट शेल हैव दी उसके पास ऑथोरिटी होगी कि कैसे वो इन्वेस्टिगेट करे इन टू एनी अदर मैटर इन रिलेशन टू दी आइटम्स स्पेसिफाइड इन दिस सब सेक्शन फोर और रेफर टू इट बाय दी बोर्ड फॉर दिस पर्पज शेल हैव पावर टू ऑप्टेन प्रोफेशनल एडवाइस फ्रॉम एक्सटर्नल सोर्सेज एंड हैव फुल एक्सेस टू इन्फॉर्मेशन कंटेन इन द रिकॉर्ड्स टू दी कंपनी सेक्शन वन सेवेंटी सेवन सब उसके बाद देन कम्स दी राइट ऑफ ऑडिट कमेटी Now, हम फादर बात कर रहे हैं कि ऑडिट कमेटी के राइट क्या होंगे दिस इज एम्पावर टू सेक्शन 177 सब सेक्शन 5 कैन इन्वेस्टिगेट कर सकती है सेक्शन 177 सब सेक्शन 6 के अकॉर्डिंग कॉल फॉर द कमेंट्स ऑफ द ऑडिटर्स अबाउट डिस्कस एनी रिलेटेड इश्यूज विद द इंटरनल एंड स्टैट्यूटरी ऑडिटर्स एंड द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ द कंपनी व्हाट विल बी द इंटरनल कंट्रोल सिस्टम द स्कोप ऑफ ऑडिट इंक्लूडिंग द ऑब्जर्वेशंस ऑफ द ऑडिटर्स how there will be the review of financial statement before their submission to the board then comes the right to be heard before the audit committee right to be heard before the audit committee jo bhi auditors hai of a company and the key managerial persona they shall have a right to be heard in the meeting of the audit committee when it consider the auditors report but shall not have the right to vote then comes the whistle mechanism whistle mechanism kya hai a whistle mechanism is formed for the directors and employees who may report genuine concerns not all the companies but only the prescribed ones are required to establish the vigil mechanism jo bhi provision honge in contained in section 177 9 and 10 and rule 7 of the companies meeting of board and its power rule 2014 govern the concept of whistle mechanism these are stated below how there will be the formation of whistle mechanism kaise banega according to section 177 whistle mechanism shall be formed by every listed company it shall be formed kaise formed hoga by every listed companies prescribed class of companies as per rule 7 the company which accept deposit from the company पब्लिक जो कंपनी एक्सेप्ट करती है डिपॉजिट पब्लिक से कंपनी विच हैव बोरो मनी फ्रॉम बैंक एंड पब्लिक फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन इन एक्सेस ऑफ फिफ्टी करोड़ रुपी और मोर अगर वो बोरो करी है एवरी जो भी लिस्टेड कंपनी है प्रिस्क्राइब क्लास ऑफ कंपनी एज पर रूल सेवन कंपनी जो कि एक्सेप्ट करती है डिपॉजिट पब्लिक से कंपनी जो कि बोरो करती है मनी फ्रॉम बैंक से पब्लिक फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन से इन एक्सेस ऑफ फिफ्टी करोड़ रुपी और More. What will be the purpose? क्या होगा? Whistle mechanism. Whistle mechanism is formed for the director and employee who may report the genuine concern in the manner prescribed in Rule Seven. Whistle mechanism के ensure करेगा adequate safeguards को. According to Section One Seventy Seven, जो whistle mechanism है, वो provide करेगा adequate safeguard against the victimization of person who use such mechanism and make provision for direct access to the chairperson of the audit committee in the appropriate or exceptional cases. How there will be the establishment case of a vigil mechanism and manner of reporting. So, be provision of a rule seven kind in this respect as stated as under.
who will be the users of whistle mechanism ke users kaise honge jo bhi directors aur employee honge of the company can you for can use this system of whistle mechanism for reporting their genuine concern jo bhi directors aur employees honge company ke wo use kar sakte hai system of whistle mechanism for reporting their genuine concern taki wo report kar paaye their genuine concern company having audit committee companies jinke paas audit committee hai The company which are required to constitute an audit committee shall oversee the whistle mechanism through the audit committee. If any of the members of the committee have a conflict of interest in a given case, they should recuse themselves, and the other on the committee would deal with the matter on hand. Company having no audit committee. Company in which there is no audit committee. Company having no audit committee. In cases of other companies, the board of directors shall nominate a director to play the role of audit committee for the purpose of whistle mechanism. Other director and employee may report their concern to such nominated director. What will be the adequate safeguards against victimization? Ki against safeguards kya honge? What will be the what will be the adequate safeguard against the victimization? जो भी स्टेटेड है इन सेक्शन 177 जो विजुअल मैकेनिज्म है वो प्रोवाइड करेगा एडिक्वेट सेफगार्ड्स अगेंस्ट विक्टिमाइजेशन ऑफ एम्प्लॉइज एंड डायरेक्टर हु अवेल ऑफ इट डायरेक्ट एक्सेस इन एक्सेप्शन केसेस हाउ देयर विल बी द डायरेक्ट एक्सेस इन एक्सेप्शनल केसेस एज स्टेटेड इन सेक्शन 177 सब सेक्शन 10 जो एम्प्लॉइज और डायरेक्टर जो कि अवेल करेंगे विजुअल मैकेनिज्म दे मे हैव डायरेक्ट एक्सेस टू द चेयरपर्सन ऑफ द ऑडिट कमिटी और द डायरेक्टर नॉमिनेटेड टू प्ले द रोल ऑफ ऑडिट कमिटी as may be in the exceptional cases actions against repeated frivolous complaints what will be the action against repeated frivolous complaint in case of repeated frivolous complaint being filed by director or an employee jo bhi committee hogi director hogi jo ki nominated karti hai to play the role of audit committee may take suitable action against the concerned director or employee including the reprimand then what will be the disclosure of details of whistle mechanism details kya hogi it is imperative for the company to disclose the details of establishment of whistle mechanism on the website of the company in the post report then what will be the punishment for contravention of section 177 In case of contravention of section 177 the company shall be liable hogi to a penalty of 5 lakh rupee ke liye they shall be it shall be liable for the penalty of 5 lakh rupee and every officer of the company who is in default shall be liable to a penalty of 1 lakh officer jo hai wo 1 lakh ke liye aur company jo hai wo 5 lakh ke liye then other hamara nomination and remuneration committee and stakeholder relationship committee and punishment section 178 Section 178 of the Act contain provision in respect of nomination and remuneration committee, as well as the stakeholder relationship committee. Nomination and remuneration committee (NRC) क्या बोलते हैं? Sub section one and section four of section 178 and the rule six of the company's meeting of board and its power rule 2014 lay down the provision in respect of the nomination and remuneration committee as ended. Formation of nomination and remuneration committee, section 178. One read with rule six state that the board of directors of every listed public company and a company covered under rule four of the company appointment and qualification of director rule 2014 shall constitute a nomination and remuneration committee. Following diagram, depicts the prescribed company which are required to constitute a nomination and remuneration committee. So, any be every public listed company, so any be public listed company has every public listed company. पब्लिक कंपनी जिसके बेडअप शेयर कैपिटल है दस करोड़ या उससे ज्यादा पब्लिक कंपनी जिसका टर्न ओवर है एक वन हंड्रेड करोड़ रुपी और मोर पब्लिक कंपनी इन विच दी एग्रीगेट आउटस्टैंडिंग लोन डिबेंचर डिपोजिट जो है वो एक्सीड करता है फिफ्टी करोड़ रुपी और मोर company not required to constitute the nomination and remuneration committee banane ki zarurat nahi hai following unlisted public company are not covered by this company's appointment and qualification of director rule 2014 and therefore are not required to constitute the nomination and remuneration committee a joint venture a wholly owned subsidiary adornment company as defined under section 445 of the act uske baad when a company ceases to constitute a nomination and remuneration committee जब कभी भी कमी जो है वो सीज कर दी थी है टू एग्जिस्ट फॉर द नॉमिनेशन एंड रेमिनेशन कमिटी a company which was obligated to constitute a nomination and remuneration committee shall not be required to constitute such a committee if it ceases to fulfill any of the three conditions 
Jogi relayed Kata to paid up share capital, turn over or outstanding loan, etc. as let down in third, proviso to rule this for three consecutive years. It shall again be required to constitute a nomination and remuneration committee if it start the meeting of any such condition. Then comes the clarification. Explanation to rule 4. 1 clarifies that to be paid up share capital hoogi, turnover hoogi, outstanding loan hoga, debenture hoga, deposit hoga, as the case may be existing on the last day of latest audited financial statement that the same shall be taken into account. Then comes the composition of nomination and remuneration committee. To be various functions where the uh, NRC nomination and remuneration committee ke shall be as under. You formulation karegi criteria for qualification etc. Then RC shall formulate karegi the criteria for determining the qualification of positive attributes, independence of director, this. Recommendation of policy regarding the remuneration. So be an RCA shall recommend karegi to the board a policy. So ki relate karegi to the remuneration for the director, key managerial personnel and other employees. Recommendation for appointment and removal. So be nomination, remuneration and com uh, this committee here. Identify Karigi person who are qualified to become director and who may be appointed in senior management in accordance with the criteria let down, recommend to their board appointment and removal. The expression senior management means personnel of the company who are member of its core management team, excluding the board of directors comprising all members of management one level below the executive director including the functional heads. What will be the manner? What will be the manner for effective evaluation of performance? Ham kya bolte hai that what will be the manner? Manner kya hoga for effective evaluation of performance ka? What will be the manner for effective evaluation of performance? So NRC hai wo specify karegi effective evaluation of performance of board, it committees and individual director to be carried out either by the board, by nomination and remuneration committee or by an independent external agency and review its implementation and compliance. What will be the parameter kya hoga for formulation of policy? According to section 178 subsection 4, so be nomination and remuneration committee hogi shell while formulating the policy under this section ensure that so be level and composition of the remuneration is reasonable hai, sufficient here to attain, retain and motivate directors of the quality required to run the company successfully. Relationship of remuneration to performance is clear here, meet appropriate performance benchmark. Remuneration to director, key managerial personnel and senior management involves a balance between the fixed and incentive pay reflecting the short and long term performance objectives appropriate to the working and its of the company and its core. Then there will be the disclosure regarding the policy. It is imperative that, that is such a policy to be formulated we under section 178 of section 3 shall be placed on the website of the company if any and the salient feature of the policy changes therein if any along with the web address of the policy if any shall be disclosed in the board's report. Attending of general meetings. Section 178 of section 7 the chairperson or in his absence any other members of the committee authorized by him in this behalf shall attend the meeting of the committee. In case of listed company formation co composition, responsibility and right of nomination and renovation committee shall be governed by SEBI LODR regulation issue under SEBI Act 1992. According to the listing agreement, the members of NRC shall be known executive director and the chairperson that is needed to be independent director. In case of a government company which has not committed a default in filing its financial statement under section 137 and the annual return under section 92 with the registrar, subsection 2, 3 and 4, section 178 shall not apply except with regard to appointment of senior management and other employees. Notification number this, Stakeholder Relationship Committee, that is the SRC, and MC Padab SRC Padengu. What will be the Stakeholder Relationship Committee? Formation and functioning of SRC section 178 subsection 5 and 6 lay down the provision relating to the formation, constitution and functioning of the stakeholder relationship committee as under. Section 178 subsection 5 formation and continuous constitution of stakeholder relationship committee. 
द बोर्ड ऑफ डायरेक्टर ऑफ अ कंपनी व्हिच कंसिस्ट ऑफ मोर देन 1000 अगर इसमें आता है मोर देन 1000 स्टेक होल्डर डिबेंचर होल्डर डिपॉजिट होल्डर एंड एनी अदर सिक्योरिटी होल्डर एट एनी टाइम ड्यूरिंग द फाइनेंशियल ईयर शैल कंस्टिट्यूट द स्टेक होल्डर रिलेशनशिप कमेटी सेक्शन 178 सब सेक्शन 5 चेयरपर्सन ऑफ स्टेक होल्डर रिलेशनशिप कमेटी एस आर सी एस आर सी शेल बी हेडेड बाई दी चेयरपर्सन शेल बी नोन एक्सिक्यूटिव डायरेक्टर फर्दर एस आर सी शेल कंसिस्ट ऑफ सच अदर मेंबर एज मे बी डिसाइडेड बाई दी बोर्ड सेक्शन वन सेवेंटी एट सब सेक्शन सिक्स ऑब्जेक्टिव क्या हो गया स्टेक होल्डर रिलेशनशिप कमेटी एस आर सी एस आर सी जो है वो कंसिडर करेंगे रिजोल्व करेंगे Is of the security holders of the company. It shall protect the interests of all the security holders and not merely of the equity holders. Then comes the chairperson of committee to attend the general meeting. What will be the chairperson of committee to attend the general meeting? As per section 178, subsection 7, the chairperson of each of the committee constituted under this section or in absence any other members of the committee authorized by him in this behalf shall attend the general meeting of the company. Penalty क्या होगी for contravention? In case of contravention of provision of section 178, the company shall be liable to penalty of five lakh rupee, and every officer of the company who is in default shall be liable for a penalty of one lakh rupee. अगर आपने कोई contravention नहीं किया SRC का, is unable to resolve in good faith, it is to be noted in ability to resolve and consider any grievance by the stakeholder relationship committee. In good faith shall not come. Contravention of Section 178, and therefore no penalty shall be attracted to provision of this Section 178, Subsection 8. In case of listed company, formation, composition, responsibility, and rights of stakeholder relationship committee shall be governed by SEBI LODR Regulation 2015, issued under the SEBI Act 1992. उसके बाद Section 178 of the Act shall not apply to Section एट कंपनी पे नहीं लगेगा इट एंड प्रोवाइडेड दैट इट हैज नॉट कमिटेड द डिफॉल्ट इन फाइलिंग इट्स वन इनिशियल स्टेटमेंट 127 अंडर लेटर 92000 बाय बाय एज ओके उसके बाद पावर्स ऑफ द बोर्ड सेक्शन 179 व्हाट ऑल विल बी द पावर्स क्या होगी बोर्ड के सेक्शन 179 क्या बात करेगा सेक्शन 179 ऑफ द एक्ट एंड रूल 8 ऑफ द कंपनीज मीटिंग ऑफ बोर्ड एंड इट्स पावर रूल 2014 ले डाउन द प्रोविजन इन रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ पावर्स ऑफ द बोर्ड दे आर डिस्क्राइब एज अंडर BOD is entitled to exercise the same powers as the company is authorized according to section 179.1. The board shall be entitled to exercise all such power as the company is authorized to exercise and do all such acts and things which the company is authorized to do. In fact, the board of director who ga of a company enjoy the wide ranging powers, virtually all the powers for managing the affairs of the company except where the given matters require approval of shareholders. In general meeting, in other words, the board is empowered to exercise all such powers which shall secure the interest of the company and the shareholders. Placing of restriction on exercising of powers by the board provides so to section 179 of section 1. जो एक्सरसाइज होगी पावर्स बाय द बोर्ड ऑफ डायरेक्टर्स इज नॉट अनरिडर्ड और अनरिस्ट्रिक्टेड इट इज प्रोवाइडेड दैट व्हाइल एक्सरसाइजिंग सच अ पावर और डूइंग सच अ एक्ट और थिंग द बोर्ड शैल बी सब्जेक्ट टू द प्रोविजन ऑफ कंटेन इन दिस दैट बी हैव इन द कंपनी एक्ट 2013 इन द मेमोरेंडम और आर्टिकल और इन एनी रेगुलेशन व्हिच आर नॉट इनकंसिस्टेंट विद द एक्ट और मेमोरेंडम और आर्टिकल एंड आर ड्यूली देयर मेड देयर अंडर दिस विल इंक्लूड रेगुलेशन मेड बाय द कंपनी इन द जनरल मीटिंग Further, the board sh board shall not exercise any powers or do any act or thing which is directed or required, whether under the Companies Act 2013 or by the memorandum or article of the company, or otherwise to be exercised or done by the company in the general meeting. What will be the prospective effect? क्या होगा regulation made in the general meeting? Any regulation made by the company in general meeting shall not be invalidated. Any prior act of the board which would have been valid if that regulation had not been made. Thus, a regulation made by a company in general meeting cannot be retrospective effect and therefore cannot be invalidate prior act of the board if they otherwise validly executed earlier. What all will be the powers of board to be exercised by means of resolution? Following powers are required to be exercised by the board of director by means of resolution passed at a duly convened board meeting to make calls on shareholder in respect of money and paid of their shares. To authorize buyback of security under Section 60A, to issue security including the bancer whether in India or outside India, to borrow monies. By way of explanation too, it is clarified that in respect of dealing between the company and its banker, the exercise of the power by the company specified in Clause D shall 
a bond shall be the arrangement made by the company with its banker for the borrowing of money by way of overdraft or cash credit or otherwise this does not refer to the actual day to day operation on overdraft cash credit and other accounts by means of which the arrangement so made is actually availed of oh my it's so dark to grant loan or give guarantee or provide security in respect of loan section 186 of section 5 require this power to be exercised by the board resolution which is passed with the consent of all the director present at the meeting then comes the exemption in respect of section 8 company which has not committed a default in filing its financial statement under section 137 and will return under section 92 with the registrar the matter referred to in this clause section 179 may be decided by the board by circulation instead of at a meeting to approve the financial statement and the board's report to diversify the business of the company to approve amalgamation merger and reconstruction to take over a company and acquire a controlling or substantial stake in another company Other matters will be prescribed in Rule 8 of the Committee's Meeting of Board and its Power Rule 2014. This matter also to be exercised only by means of resolution passed at the meeting of the board to make the political contribution, to appoint or remove any key managerial personnel, to appoint the internal auditor and the secretarial auditor. It is to be noted that the above list is not exhaustive. There are certain other powers which are also to be exercised by the board of directors at a duly convened board meeting. Some of them are as under. then ata hamara making of contribution to political party under section 182 filing of casual vacancy under section 161 sub section 4 when the office of the director appointed in the general meeting holds vacant before the expiry of his term in the normal course approving of transaction with related party as provided under section 188 giving of loan and making of investment in the shares or other body corporate as provided under section 186 in this case besides passing the resolution at a board meeting consent of all the directors present at the meeting is also required appointing a person as a managing director who is holding the office hum kya karenge appointing a person as a managing director who is holding the office of managing director or manager in another company as provided under section 203 this power is to be exercised with the consent of the director present at the meeting then permission to be ordered to delegate some of its power was provided to section 179 sub section 3 the board may by resolution pass at a meeting delegate the powers specified in this clause borrowing of money is investing of funds and granting of loans giving of guarantee or providing of security in respect of loans the delegation may be made on such a condition as may be specified to the following any committee of director the managing director the manager and any other principal officer of the company and the principal officer is the branch officer if the company has a branch office then comes the sixth one imposing of restriction and condition by the shareholder section 179 the committee through the general meeting has power to impose restrictions and condition on the exercise by the board of any of the powers specified in section 179 in other words shareholder of a company are very much in their right to impose restriction and condition on the powers of the board of directors the shareholder jo hai wo exercise kar sakta hai kya The power of imposing restriction by passing the resolution at the general meeting may also make regulation having only retrospective effect by telling the extent of power exercisable by the board. As we know, the board of directors are fully empowered to manage the day-to-day -day affairs of the company. powers of imposing restriction by passing the resolution at the general meeting and may also make regulation having only retrospective effect curtailing the extent of powers exercisable by the board as we know the board of directors are fully empowered to manage the day to day affairs of the company the shareholder cannot impose their will on the board they cannot interfere and instruct the board to discharge certain power in a particular manner unless these are reasons to do so in the following representative cases how the shareholder are empowered to exercise the powers of the board when the directors are acting as a benefit they conduct as such that they are acting their own benefit at the expense of interest of the company thus when the director are home to us and their personal interest conflict with their duty towards the company the majority shareholder shall take decision to do undo the wrong done by the directors
when all the directors are interested in a particular transaction and therefore incompetent to act due to the absence of quorum. In such a case, shareholders shall decide through majority in the general meeting whether to entertain that transactions or not. Whether when there happen to be deadlock in the management because the director are not on talking terms or unwilling to act, thus paving way for the shareholder to ensure running of the company. Exemption to banking company. Second proviso to section 179 in respect of banking company. Following exemptions are provided. The acceptance of deposit of money by banking company in the ordinary course of the business from the public, which is repayable on demand or otherwise and withdrawal by check draft order and otherwise shall not be deemed to be borrowing of money with the meaning of section 179. Further, the placing of monies on deposit by banking company with another banking company on such a condition as the board may prescribe shall not deem to be making of loans by banking companies within the meaning of section 179. By way of explanation, when it is clarified that clause D about to borrow monies and shall not apply to borrowing by banking company from other banking companies to and from the Reserve Bank of India, the State Bank of India or any other bank established or by under any act, thus in such a cases of borrowing by a banking company, there is no need to obtain sanction by means of resolution passed at a duly convened board meeting. This is practical also to provide such exemption, keeping in view the business of a banking company. Then comes the restriction on powers of board, section 118. The powers of the board of directors of a company are not unrestricted or uncontrollable as section 180 portrays. This section contains directive provision which directs that the powers in respect of specified matters shall be exercised by the board. Subject to certain restriction that in such cases the exercise of powers by the board shall be restricted as per law. Section 180 is not applicable to a private company. What all are the matters in respect of which the power shall be exercised after obtaining the consent by special resolution? According to section 180 subsection 1, following are the matter in respect of which the board shall exercise the power with the consent of a company by special resolution and not of, on its own simply by passing a board resolution at a board meeting. To sell, lease or otherwise dispose of the whole or substantially the whole of the undertaking of the company. Or where the company owns more than one undertaking of the whole, substantially the whole of any of such undertaking, in other words, out of multiple undertaking of the company, even one is sold, leased or disposed of, either wholly or substantially, the consent by special resolution shall be required. Imposition of condition by the shareholder. According to section 180, subsection 4, any special resolution passed by the company, consenting to the transaction of sale, lease, etc., may stipulate certain conditions and if so, the same need to be specified in such resolution. Among other, the conditions shall be regarded the use, disposal, and investment of the sale proceed which may result from the transaction. Section 180, subsection 4, not to be taken as authorization for reduction in capital. It is provided that subsection shall not be deemed to authorize the company to effect any reduction in its capital. Such a reduction must be effected in accordance with the provision contained in the Companies Act 2013. No need for special resolution if selling, leasing, etc. in a part of ordinary business of the company. According to section 180, subsection 3, the restriction in form of special resolution is not attracted to the sale or lease or any property of a company where its ordinary business consists of such a selling or leasing. A clean title of the buyer, etc. In respect of a buyer who buys or in respect of other person who takes on lease, Lazy, any property investment or undertaking that is referred to in this section in good faith, his title shall not be affected despite the fact that the director resorted to selling or leasing without first obtaining the consent of the company by the special resolution. The expression undertaking means an undertaking in which the investment of the company exceeds currently at 20%. Exceed Kadi had 20% of its net worth as per the audited balance sheet of the preceding financial year or undertaking, which generated the 20% of the total income of the company during the previous financial year. The expression as substantially the whole of the undertaking in any financial year shall mean 20% or more of the value of the undertaking as per the audited balance sheet of the preceding financial year. In the case of provision of section 110 of the act applied to the company which is resorting to sale of the whole or substantially the whole of its undertaking, in section 180 it shall pass the special resolution containing such item of business by means of voting through postal ballot.
Companies Management and Administration Rule 2014. A one person company, other company having the members 200. Having members OBC hai and other company having members hai up to 200 are not required to transact any business through the postal ballot. This to invest otherwise in trust security. So the amount of compensation received by it as a result of any merger or rumble commission. It implies that if the investment of the compensation amount is made in trust security, there is no need to obtain the consent of member through the special resolution to borrow money. Where the money to be borrowed together with the money already borrowed by the company will exceed aggregate of its paid up share capital. Free reserve security premiums apart from temporary loans obtained from the company's bankers in the ordinary course of business. In simple words, borrowing including loan raised for meeting financial expenditure of a capital nature are not to include temporary loans which are obtained by the company from its banker in the ordinary course of the business. Limit on borrowing need to be specified. Section 180 requires that every special resolution passed by the company in general meeting in relation to borrowing shall specify the total amount up to which the monies may be borrowed by the board of directors. Thus, the company cannot give blanket powers to borrow money up to any extent of its choice, but the special resolution must specify the total amount that can be borrowed. In other words, a rational thinking in a form of specifying a particular amount must be exercised by the shareholder so that the borrowings are restricted. The specifying of total amount that can be borrowed is a step in direction. Excessive borrowing at the whims and the cap rises of the board are dangerous to the company as a whole, including its shareholders. That raise in excess of specified limits. If a company incurs that in excess of the limit imposed, that is more than the total amount is specified in the special resolution, it shall not be valid for effectual from the point of view of lender unless such a lender proves that he advanced the loan in good faith and without the knowledge that the limit imposed had been exceeded. Thus, the lender has to be fully cautious before extending any loan to the company. The loaned amount must not be in excess of limit imposed, otherwise it shall not be legally enforceable against the company. In other words, the lender must be aware in no certain terms or implication of section 180 and must carefully check the financial statement as well as the special resolution if any passed by the company before extending the loan facility to it. What will be the meaning of temporary loan? It is clarified by the explanation that the term temporary loan means loan which is repayable on demand or within so ki, uh, temporary loan repayable hone wale hai within uh, on demand ya fir within six months from the date of loan as such short term cash credit arrangement that is counting of bill and the issue of short term loans of similar character but it does not include loan raised for the purpose of financial expenditure of capital nature what will be exemption to a banking company so acceptance hoga by a banking company in the ordinary course of its business or deposit of money from the public repayable on demand and otherwise and withdrawal by check draft order or otherwise that the same should not be deemed to be borrowing of monies by the banking companies to remit or give time for the payment of any debt due from a director thus if any debt is repayable by director then it cannot be remitted or its repayment time cannot be extended unless consent by passing of special resolution it is given by the company contribution then comes the contribution to bona fide and charitable funds etc this type of contribution by a company beyond certain limit requires passing of ordinary resolution as required by section 181, the provision of which are discussed later in this chapter. The board of director of Stepping Stones Publication Limited resolved to borrow a sum of 15 crore from a nationalized bank at a board meeting held on this. One of the directors who opposed the said borrowing are not in interest of a company has raised an issue that the said borrowing is outside the borrowing powers of the board. The following data is given for your information. Share capital is 5 crore, reserve and surplus 5 crore, secure loan 15 crore, unsecured loan 5 crore. According to the provision of section 180 of the companies of 2013, the borrowing should not exceed the aggregate of the paid up share capital. Free reserve security premium. While calculating the limit, the temporary loans obtained by the company from its banker in the ordinary course of business will be excluded. However, from the figures available in the present case, the proposed borrowing is 15 crore will exceed the limit calculated as per the given information. The proposed borrowing are beyond the powers of board of directors. 
In view of the above position, the management of Stepping Stone Publication Limited should take steps to pass a resolution authorizing to borrow the proposed amount of 15 crores so that the requirement of Section 180 of Section 1C is satisfied. Only thereafter, the proposed borrowing can be availed. As notified by the NCA Section 180 of the Act, Exemption के बोलती है कि as notified by the NCA section 180 of the Act, जो भी restriction होगा on the power of the board shall not apply to a private company which has not committed a default in its finding financial statement 137 annual return 92. In an order passed by the National Company Law Appellate Tribunal, New Delhi, this it was led that there were director of company enter into an agreement with outsider to sell shares of himself and others without prior approval of shareholders. Said agreement would not be binding on shareholders. In the given case, the one director of a company entered into an agreement with appellant who was an outsider to sell shares of himself and respondent shareholders to appellant and let management of a company go in hand of appellant. However, there was nothing to show that there was any shareholder meeting on decision or to permit one of the director D1 to part with management of the company to outsider. Further, company was a sick company and there could not be the change of management without permission of BIFR. However, there was nothing to show that any such consent was were sought and granted. Further, said agreement and with an agreement between D1 and appellant, there was nothing to show that respondent shareholder were party to such agreement or that company was party to such agreement. Thus, it was held that said agreement would not be binding on respondent shareholder and the company. Then comes the National Company Law Tribunal Chennai Bank laid down in Srimati Sulochana uh, voices the Arun Nodhya Enterprises Limited that as per Section 180 of the Companies Act 2013, Article of Association of a Company authorized managing director to carry on management of affairs of company. Board of Director of Company is not restrained managing director from performing any particular act or function in management of business of company. Therefore, it could be safely concluded that the managing director was empowered to sell property, particularly when company itself was in business of real estate and for every, every genuine sale transaction, managing director did not obtain permission of shareholders. Company to contribute the bona fide and charitable funds, etc. Company to contribute to bona fide and charitable funds, etc. Section 181 of Applicable to both public and private companies empowers the board of director to contribute to bona fide charitable and other funds up to a particular limit, which if exceeded needs to be permitted by the company through passing an ordinary resolution. Limit on contribution by the board of director. The board is empowered to contribute any amount in any financial year if the aggregate amount of such a contribution does not exceed 5% se zyada nahi hota hai, that this um, does not exceed 5% of the average net profit of the company for the three immediately preceding financial year. Where the above, above limit is exceeded in case agar aggregate contribution amount in any financial year is beyond the limit as specified by the board for prior permission of the company in general meetings shall be required for such contribution. The expression other point is wide enough to enable contribution of the kind is specified in the special resolution to be made by the company. The board of director of very well limited in contributing every year to charitable organization a sum of 60,000 rupees in a particular year. The company suffer losses and the director are contemplating to contribute the said amount in spite of the losses. Under Section 181 of the Companies Act 2013, the Board of Directors of Companies authorized to contribute to a bona fide charitable and other funds. However, in case the aggregate amount of such a contribution in any financial year exceeds the 5% of its average profit for the three immediately preceding financial year, prior permission of the company in general meetings shall be required. The section does not make it mandatory for the company to have a profit for making a charitable contribution in any financial year, as the amount of donation is restricted to the average of immediately preceding three years profit. It is possible for a company suffering a loss to make contribution provided it is made to a bona fide charitable fund and the average of the three immediately preceding financial year profits, including the current losses, is positive. In the present case, even the company has incurred the losses, it can contribute to the charitable fund only. 
If it is a bona fide charitable fund and the amount is up to 5% of the average of the immediately preceding 3 years including the current losses, in case the contribution exceeds the limit, the prior approval of the members must be taken at the general meeting of the company. Then comes the prohibition and restriction regarding the political contribution section 182. Section 182 of the Act deals with the provision relating to prohibition and restriction regarding the political contribution. These provisions are stated as under. Contribution by a company to a political party. A company is permitted to contribute any amount without any limit directly and indirectly to any political party, notwithstanding anything contained in any other provision of the Companies Act 2013. It is to be noted that Section 182 has overriding effect. Meaning of political party, the term political party means a political party which is registered under section 29A of the representation of the people act. Companies not allowed contributing to political party. The following companies are not allowed to contribute to any political party. A government company, a company which has been in existence for less than three financial years. What will be the procedure for making contribution? A company shall make the contribution to a political party only after a resolution authorizing the making of such a contribution is passed at a meeting of the board of directors. In effect, such a resolution shall be deemed to be justification in law for the making of contribution authorized by it. Deemed a political contribution. Then comes the deemed to political contribution. In addition to making any direct contribution to political party, following contribution are also to be deemed a political contribution. A donation and subscription and payment given by the company to a person who its knowledge and carrying any activity which at the time at which such donation, subscription and payment was given can reasonably be regarded to be likely effect to public support for a political party. The amount of expenditure incurred directly indirectly by a company on an advertisement in any publication being in nature of sovereign broker, flat, pamphlet or the like. Where such a publication is by or on behalf of a political party, where such a publication is not by on behalf but for the advantage of political party. Then comes the disclosure of contributed amounts section 182. Every company jo hai, wo disclose karegi in its profit and loss uh, account the total amount contributed by it under section 182 during the financial year to which the account relates. What will be the modes of contribution section 182 3A? The contributions of to political party under section 182 shall be made according to the following modes. By an account pay check drawn on a bank, by an account pay bank draft, by using electronic by using electronic clearing system through a bank account, through any instrumental which is issued pursuant to any scheme notified under any rule, for the time being in force for contribution to the political party. What will be the punishment for contravention? If a company, agar ek company jo hai, makes any contravention, agar ek company jo hai, makes any contribution in contravention of the provision of section 182, the punishment shall be as under. Company punishable with a fine up to five times of the amount of contribution to be made, five times. Every defaulting officer punishable with imprisonment up to six months and with up to five times of the amount of contribution to be made. Uski Banata, the MCA wide this general contribution to electoral trust according to this circular company. The ministry hereby clarifies that the company contributing any amount or amount to the electoral trust company or contributing to a political party or parties are not required to make disclosure required under this section of Companies Act 2013. It will suffice if the accounts of the company disclose the amount released to an electoral trust company. Company contributing any amount and amount directly to political party and party will be required to make the disclosure laid down in the Companies Act. Electoral Trust Company will be required to disclose all amount received by them from the other companies who is in their books of accounts and also disclose the amount or amounts contributed by them to a political party and parties as required by Section 182, Subsection 3 of the Companies Act. The Board of Directors of LN Limited, Incorporated in April 2017, proposes to donate 50,000 to a political party for the financial year. So, average net profit determined in accordance with the provision of the Companies Act 2013 during the two immediately preceding financial year is 20 lakh. As per Section 182, Subsection 1 of the Companies Act 2013, any company may contribute any amount directly or indirectly to any political party except a government company and a company which has been in existence for less than three financial years. However, in the given case, the LM Limited happens to be the company which has been in existence for less than 
Three years free financial year as it is not permitted to donate any amount to the concerned political party for the financial year. Seahawk Cycle Limited is a company incorporated four years ago. It has earned profits amounting 5 lakh, 8 lakh, 11 lakh respectively during the last three financial years. The board of directors of the company proposes to donate a sum of 50,000 to a political party. In view of section 182 subsection 1, Seahawk Cycle Limited can contribute the said amount of 50,000 to the concerned political party. However, it needs to pass a board resolution authorizing making such a contribution at a meeting of the board of directors. What all will be the powers of board and other persons to make contribution to national defense fund etc. section 183. Section 183 of the Act empowers the board and other authorized person to make contribution to the national defense fund etc. as described below. Contribution of amount to national defense fund and other fund as approved by the central government. No limit contribution to the national defense fund or any other fund approved by the central government for the purpose of national defense can be made without any limit. Then comes the exercise of power. The power to make such a contribution shall be exercised directly by the board of directors of the company, any person or authority exercising the powers of the board of directors or the company in general meeting. Overriding effect, section 183 has overriding effect. The contribution may be made notwithstanding anything contained in section 180, 181, 182 and any other provision of the company 2013 in the memorandum article or any other instrument relating to the company. This one. What all will be the power of board and other persons to make contribution to National Defense Point etc. Section 183. Section 183 of the Act empowers the board and other authorized persons to make contribution to the National Defense Point etc. as described below. Job contribution of amount to National Defense Point and other point as approved by the central government. There will be no limit contribution to National Defense Point or any other point approved by the central government for the purpose of National Defense can be made without any limit. Then comes the Koi limit nahi Uske baad exercise of power. The power to make such a contribution shall be exercised by the board of director of the company and any other person or authority exercising the powers of a board of director or the company in general meeting. Overriding effect. Section 183 has overriding effect that is the contribution may be made notwithstanding anything contained in this section 180, 181, 182 and any other provision of the company that 2013 in the memorandum article or any other instrument relating to the company. Disclosure in profit and loss account. Every company shall disclose in its profit and loss account the total amount or amount contributed by it to the National Defense Fund or any other approved fund during the financial year to which the amount relates. Rather than next term, that, that is what will be the disclosure of interest by director section 184. Though be office of a director in a company that is of a trust, a person who holds the directorship in a fiduciary capacity as a trustee of the assets of a company, the director is duty bound to pass on the benefit accruing from all such transactions which belong to the company. At any stage, if he becomes interested in the transaction, the benefit of which rights to accrue to the company. He must disclose his interest so that the board and if required, the company may take a correctional decision whether to continue with that transaction or not. The disclosure of interest to be made by the director includes board general disclosure of interest and specific disclosure of interest. Section 184 of the Act, which contains the provision in respect of disclosure of interest by the directors, is applicable to all the companies and directors. This provision are discussed as under. Then comes the general disclosure of interest. Every director shall disclose his concern or interest in any company or companies or body corporate firms or other association if the individual which shall include the shareholding in the manner prescribed in Rule 9 of the company's meeting of board or its power, Rule 2014. The intention of law behind being behind such a disclosure is to make known the other directors of a company about the interest of concerned director in other companies and firm etc. When to make the general disclosure of interest? Every director shall disclose his interest at the first meeting of the board in which he participate as a director thereafter at the first meeting of the board in every financial year whenever there is any change in the disclosure already made then the first meeting held after such a change 
what all will be the provision of rule 9 as regard manner of disclosure and certain other matters the provision of rule 9 are given under every director jo hai wo disclose karega his concern interest by written notice se in form mbp 1 mein such a director shall process is to be disclosed at the meeting held immediately after the date of notice all notice shall be kept at the register office of the company preserved for 8 years from the end of financial year for to which they relate for 8 years from the end of the financial year for which they relate and they shall be kept in the custody of the company secretary or any other person authorized by the board every director shall disclose karega his in his concern interest by written notice may in a form mbp 1 may such a director shall cause it to be disclosed at the meeting held immediately after the date of notice all notices shall be kept kept at the register office of the company preserved for 8 years from the end of financial year to which they relate they shall be kept in the custody of the company secretary or any other person authorized by the board then comes that what will be the specific disclosure of interest According to Section 184 sub Section 2, a director of a company shall make a specific disclosure of interest whenever he, in any way, whether directly or indirectly, in a concern or interest rate in a contractual arrangement or proposed contractual arrangement entered into or to be entered into with the body corporate in which such a director or such a director in association with any other director hold more than two percent share holding of that body corporate. With the body corporate in which such a director is a promoter, manager, chief executive officer, with a firm or other entity in which such a director is a partner, member, owner, and all. उसके बाद when to make a specific disclosure of interest. The disclosure shall be made as an under the interested director shall disclose the nature of his concern, interest at the meeting of the board in which the contract or arrangement is discussed for the first time. He shall not participate in such a meeting. No participation implies that he shall not matter, not discuss the matter relating to such a contract, and also shall not vote if there happens to be voting in this concern connection. It may happen that any director is not so concerned or interested at the time of entering into such contract or arrangement. However, if he becomes interested after the contract or arrangement is entered into, he shall disclose his interest and uh, interest for which he becomes so far at the first meeting of the board held after becoming such a concern or interested. Then the exception or modification. Then comes the exception or modification. In case of private company which has not committed a default in its filing its financial statement 137 annual written 92 with the registrar the provision of section 184 shall apply with the exception that the interested director may participate in such a meeting after the disclosure of his interest in respect of section 8 company which has not committed a default in its filing its financial statement 137 annual written 92 with the registrar the provision of section 184 sub section 2 shall apply only if the transaction with reference to section 188 on the basis of terms and condition the contractual arrangement exceeds 1 lakh Rupee. If it exceeds one lakh rupee, how there will be the contract voidable at the option of the company if there is a known disclosure? A contract or arrangement entered into by the company shall be voidable at its option if the interested director, who has a direct or indirect concern or interest in such a contract arrangement, does not disclose his interest as required under Section 184. If such director participates in a meeting where such contract and arrangement is discussed. It may be noted that the contract is voidable and not void at the option of the resigning. The contract lies with the company and not with the interested director. Thus, if the company decides to honor the contract, the interested director cannot resign it because of irregularity. Then comes how there will be the punishment for contravention section 184. If a director of a company contravenes the provision of section 184, does not disclose his interest or punishes wrong information in this respect, he shall be liable to a penalty of one lakh rupees. Then comes there will be no restriction on director. Nothing contained in this section 184 shall be taken to prove that the operation of any rule of law relating to a director of a company from having any concern or interest in any contract or arrangement with the company. Exemption from the disclosure if they are holding up to two percent. There will be what? There will be the exemption if holding up to two percent. According to section 184, क्या बोलता है? The provision जो है section 184 का regarding the disclosure by interested director shall not apply to any contract and arrangement entered into to be entered into between the companies where any of the director either company two and more of them together hold two and more percent of the paid up share capital in the company. वाई लिमिटेड जो है वो एंटर हुआ है इनटू कॉन्ट्रैक्ट विद जेड लिमिटेड के साथ जिसकी पेड अप कैपिटल है पचास लाख वन ऑफ द डायरेक्टर ऑफ वाई इज होल्डिंग इक्विटी शेयर्स ऑफ नॉमिनेबल वैल्यू फिफ्टी थाउजेंड इन जेड बट डिड नॉट डिस्कोज इंटरेस्ट एट द अप्रोप्रिएट बोर्ड मीटिंग 
In this case, as per Section 184 of uh, two of the companies at 2013. The disclosure of interest by director is not required in any contract and arrangement between two companies where any of the director of the company or two or more of them together hold or hold not more than two percent of the paid up share capital in other company. Here the holding of the director of Y Limited and Z Limited is only one percent. One percent means because the fifty lakh is one percent. Here, one percent fifty thousand is, but which is less than two percent. But we are saying two percent only. Therefore, he does not require to disclose his interest regarding. But so, then he does not disclose his interest regarding. But so, then he does not disclose his interest regarding. But so, then he does not disclose his interest regarding. What will be the effect in appointment of director not to invalidate action taken section 176? Section 176 of the Act contains protective provision by which action taken by the director shall not get invalidated if subsequently it is noticed that there happen to be defect in his appointment. The validation of action provides a kind of protection to the company as well as the third party. The provision of section 176 are stated as under. No act done by a person as a director shall be deemed to be invalid if it is it if it was subsequently noticed that his appointment was invalid by reason of any defect, disqualification and had been terminated by virtue of any provision contained in the Companies Act 2013 or in the Articles of the Company. What will be the act not valid if done after noticing his appointment to be invalid or have terminated? It is provided that section 176 shall not be deemed to be give validity to any act done by the director after his appointment has been noticed by the company to be invalid or to have terminated. In other words, any subsequent act done by the director shall not get validated under the following circumstances. Where it comes to the notice of the company that his appointment is invalid or illegal or there is no appointment, whether it is in the notice of the company that his appointment has been terminated. Whether it is noticed by the company that his act or illegal ultra wires the companies of the company's act. Where it was well with the knowledge of the third party that the appointment of director was not valid, there existed an irregularity or there was any disqualification attached to the director and still such party dealt with them, with him. Where the director know it is fully that his term of the office has expired but continue to occupy his office despite such knowledge. Where a person exercises his power as director, though he is apparently know that he has no authority to exercise such a power because his appointment was invalid or he has since been terminated. Then comes the what will be the protection of the act of managing director, whole time director or manager? In terms of section 196 of section 5, any act done by the managing director, whole time director, manager before his appointment was disapproved by the company at a general meeting shall be deemed to be valid. Mr. Mohan was appointed as a director at the annual general meeting of a company held on 30th September 2018. He functioned in the capacity as a director from then onward. Subsequently, during the mid of August 2019, it was noticed that there were certain irregularities in his appointment and therefore on 31st August 2019, his appointment was declared invalid. However, Mr. Mohan continued to act as a director even after 31st August 2019. In the given example, in view of section 176, the act done by Mr. Mohan till the date of noticing irregularities in his appointment shall be deemed as valid and binding on the company. Any act done by him after the date on which irregularity in his appointment was noticed by the company shall be valid. Accordingly, act done by Mr. Mohan after this shall be invalid and not binding upon the company. High Court of Andhra Pradesh in Sri Mati Renuka, this biological lad that the benefit of Section 176 of the company is at 2013 is generally available to third party who enter into transaction with the company not knowing what internal structure and mechanism of company is. It was mentioned that a person such a managing director or director who is expected to know what is right and what is wrong, what is legal and what is illegal cannot be allowed to presume things in his favor if then he fails to prove that he acted as per law. He cannot take shelter under section 176 more so in case where the director uh, this their office then loan to director section etc. Loan to director section 185. Section 185 of the Act contains provision which impose restriction on the loans, etc. being given to director, etc. This provision as stated below. Imposition of restriction, Section 185, Subsection 1. 
The company subject to exemption stated in this box is not permitted in a claim directly to advance any loan, including any loan represented by a book debt, or to give any guarantee or provide any security in connection with the loan taken by any director of a company or company which is holding company or any partner or relative or any such director. Any firm in which such a director or relative is a partner. Relaxation from restriction section 185 subsection 2. Subject to specified condition, the company is permitted to advance any loan, including any loan represented by a book debt, give any guarantee, or provide any security in connection with any loan taken by any person in whom any of the director of a company is interested. The specified condition to be followed are special resolution is passed by the company in general meeting. However, the explanatory statement to the notice for the relevant general meeting shall disclose the full particulars of a loan given or guarantee given by the security provided and the purpose for which the loan or guarantee or security is proposed to be utilized by the recipient of loan or guarantee or security and any other relevant fact. The loan are utilized by the borrowing company or for its principal business activity. The expression any person whom any of the director of the company is interested means any private company or of which any director is a director or member, a body corporate at a general meeting or not less than 25% of the total voting power. Anke Bolinge that is not less than 25% of the total voting power may be exercised controlled by any such director and two or more such director together. Any body corporate, the board of director, managing director, manager uh, there aware of is accustomed to act in accordance with the director or instruction of the board or any director or directors of the lending company. Then comes where there will be more known applicability of restriction section 185 subsection 3. In the following cases, restrictions stated in section 185 subsection 1 or specified condition for relaxation of restrictions stated in section 185 subsection 2 shall not apply. Wherein, where any loan is given to managing director, whole time director as a part of a condition of service extended by the company to all its employees, pursuant to any such scheme which is approved by the members by special resolution. Where a company in the ordinary course of business provides loans or gives guarantee security for the due repayment of loan, in respect of such a loan, interest is charged at a rate not less than rate of prevailing yield of one year, three years, five years, or ten years gone in security closes to the tenure of the loan. Where any loan is made by holding company, its wholly owned subsidiary company, where any guarantee is given or security is provided by holding company in respect of any loan made to its wholly owned subsidiary company, where any guarantee is given or security is provided by holding company in respect of loan made by a bank or financial institution to its subsidiary company, as a precondition, it must be ensured that the loan made under this clause are utilized by the subsidiary company for its principal activities. Then comes the penalty for contravention. Penalty for contravention care penalty for contravention of the provision of section 185. Any loan is advanced or a guarantee or security is given utilized contravening the provision of section 185 shall be made as under. Company punishable with a minimum 5, 5 lakh and a maximum 5, 25 lakh. Every defaulting officer punishable with imprisonment up to 6 months or minimum 5 lakh and maximum fine 25 lakh. The director or the other person to whom any loan is advanced and guarantee and security is given in connection with any loan taken by him or the other person punishable with imprisonment up to 6 months or minimum fine of 5 lakh and the minimum fine of rupees 25 lakh or with both. Section 185 so had the same shall not apply to government company in case of a company obtained approval of the Ministry or Department of Central Government which is administratively in charge of company or as the case may be the state government before making any loan or giving any guarantee and providing any security under the section. The borrowing exemption is applicable to government company if it is not committed a default in filing its financial statement under section 137 and will written under section 92 with the registrar. Section 185 shall not apply to private company pin apply nahi hoga in whose share capital no other body corporate has invested any money if the borrowing of such a company from bank financial institution any body corporate is less than twice of its paid up share capital or 50 crore rupee whichever is lower. From bank and financial institution twice of its paid up share capital and 50 crore whichever such a company has no default in repayment of such a borrowing subsisting at the time of making transaction under this section. The above exemption is applicable to a private company if it has not committed a default in filing its financial statement under section 137 and enrolled written under section 92 with the registrar. Then comes the Section 185 shall not apply to media company provided the loan uh, is given to director or his relative in their capacity as a member and such a transaction is disclosed in the annual account by a note. However, while complying with such exception, the media shall ensure that the interests of their shareholder are protected. Then loan and investment by a company section 186. 
then what will be the loan and investment when company section 186 kya hota hai section 186 of the act applies to both public and private company deals with the provision relating to loan and investment by company in addition to rule 11 12 and 13 also contain provision governing the making of loans and investment giving of guarantee providing of security by company these provision are discussed as under Investment permitted through two layers of investment company section 186. A company unless otherwise is subscribed is not permitted to make investment through more than two layers of investment company. Placing of such a restriction helps in preventing diversion of funds. It is a common experience that the funds can be more flagrantly diverted if a company invests through a number of two step down subsidy of a step down subsidies. It is clarified uske baad hum bol rahe hai, it is clarified here. Uh, by way of close of explanation that the expression investment company means a company whose principal business is the acquisition of shares, debenture, other security. Further, a company will be deemed to be principally engaged in the business of acquisition of share, debenture, and other security. If the asset in the form of investment in share, debenture, other security constitute not less than 50%, it is not less than 50% of its total asset, its income derived from investment business constitute not less than 50% as a proportion of its gross income. Exception to the rule two layers in the following cases the provision of section 186 shall not apply the rule of two layers shall not be applicable. Acquisition of a company incorporated outside India. How that will be the acquisition of a company incorporated outside India? If a company acquire any other company incorporated in a country outside India and such other company has investment subsidy beyond two layers as per the law of such a country the rule of two layers shall prevent this kind of acquisition. It will prevent this kind of acquisition. Subsidy from having an investment subsidies. Again, the rule of two layers shall not prevent a subsidiary company from having any investment subsidy for the purpose of meeting the requirement under any law, under any rule, regulation, framed under any law for the time being and purpose. Then, imposition of limit on the quantum of loan and investment made by the company. According to section 186, the following types of transaction, both direct and indirect, be subject to specify limit as depicted in the diagram. Giving of loan to any person or other body corporate giving guarantee or provision security in connection with the loan to any body corporate or person acquiring by way of subscription purchase or otherwise the security of any other body corporate. No company shall give any loan to any person or other body corporate give any guarantee provided security in connection with the loan with any other body corporate person acquired by way of subscription purchase otherwise the security of any other body corporate. Exceeding 60% of its paid up share capital, free reserve security premium account, 100% of its free reserve and security premium account, whichever is more. Exceeding 60%. Agar exceed kaja 60% of its paid up share capital, free reserve security premium account, or 100% of its free reserve security premium account, whichever is more. For the purpose of section 186 subsection 2, the word person does not include any individual who is in the employment of the company. Prior approval by the special resolution for exceeding, uh, prior approval can only by special resolution for exceeding limit. Where the aggregate of the loan and investment so far made the amount for which the guarantee and security is so far provided or in all other body corporate along with the investment loan guarantee security proposed to be made or given by the board exceeded the limit specified under section 186, no investment or loan shall be made or guarantee shall be given, security shall be provided unless previously authorized by a special resolution passed in a general meeting. In the case of provision of section 110 of the act applied to the company which is considering giving of loan, extending guarantee, providing security in excess of the limit as specified in section 186, it shall pass a special resolution containing such item of the business by means of voting through postal ballot of the company's desk. A one person company, other company having member up to 200 are not required to transact any business through postal ballot of the company management and administration rule 2014. Disclosure of total amount in resolution in respect of loan and guarantee and security acquisition. As per the rule 13 of the company's meeting of board or its power rule 2014, a resolution passed at a general meeting in terms of section 186 to give any loan guarantee investment providing any guarantee or acquisition under section this shall specify the total amount up to which the board of directors shall authorize to give such a loan guarantee to provide such a security or make such acquisition. Then at Amara exemption. What will be the exemption from a special resolution? 
first proviso to section 186 this however where a loan or guarantee is given or where a security has been provided by company to its wholly owned subsidiary company or joint venture company acquisition is made by a holding company by way of subscription purchase or otherwise of security its wholly owned subsidiary company the requirement of passing the resolution are required by section 186 that the same shall not apply Disclosure in financial statement second proviso to section 186 proviso to rule this in case of exemption from special resolution the company shall disclose the detail of such loans or guarantee or security or acquisition in the financial statement as provided under this section 186 disclosure to the member section 186 and the provision to this the company shall make full disclosure to the member as reflected in the following diagram company shall disclose to the members in the financial statement the full particulars of loan given investment made guarantee given security provided the purpose for which the loan or guarantee security is supposed to be utilized by the recipient of the loan or guarantee or security unanimous resolution of the board section 186 sub section 5 any investment shall be made or loan or guarantee or security given by the company only after with the when the resolution section it is passed at a meeting of the board with the consent of all the directors present at the meeting the prior approval of the public financial institution concerned where any term of Loan is subsisting shall also be obtained. Circumstances when no prior approval of public financial institution is required. Prior approval of public financial institution shall not be required where the aggregate of the loan and investment so far made the amount for which the guarantee security so far provided to all, or in all other body corporate along with the investment loan guarantee security proposed to be made or given, does not exceed the limit is specified. हम क्या बोलते हैं? Does not exceed Does not exceed the limit as specified in Section 186, Subsection 2. 60 percent of its paid-up share capital, free reserve security premium account, or 100 percent of its free reserve security premium account, whichever is more. There is no default in the repayment of loan, instalment payment of interest thereon, as per the terms and condition of such a loan to the public financial institution. What will be the rate of interest on loan? A loan under this section shall be given at a rate of interest which is not lower than the prevailing yield of one year, three year, five year, ten year government security closes to the tenure of the loan. Then comes that what will be the clarification in respect of section 186 subsection 7 rate of interest. The MC has clarified that in case where the effective yield, effective rate of return or tax free bonds is greater than the prevailing yield of one year, three year, five year or ten year government security closes to the tenure of the loan, there is no violation of this subsection. Section 186 of the Company Act 2013. Modification in Section 186 of Section 7 in respect of Section 8 Company. In respect of Section 8 Company, which have not submitted default in filing their financial statement under Section 137, annual return under Section 92 with the registered following proviso shall be interested in this Section 186 of Section 7, provided that nothing contained in this subsection shall apply to a company in which the 26, 26. Percent or more of the paid-up share capital is held by central government or partly by state or both in respect of loans provided by such a company for funding industrial research and development project in furtherance of its object as stated in the memorandum of association. No giving of loan, etc. हम क्या बोलते हैं? There will be no giving of loan, etc. till default in respect of deposit in subsisting. A company which has default in the repayment of any deposit accepted before and after the commencement of the Company Act 2013, or in payment of interest thereon, shall not give any loan or giving any guarantee or provided any security to make an acquisition till such a default is subsisting. Then, at the amount of maintenance of register, every company giving the loan or giving guarantee or providing any security in making any acquisition shall keep a register. It shall contain such a particular shall be maintained in such a manner in prescribed form. Rule twelve of the company is meeting of board and its power. Rule two thousand fourteen. The requirement of twelve R is under. Every company shall, from the date of its incorporation, maintain a register in form MBP two. Enter the particular loan and guarantee given, security provided, and uh, acquisition made. जो भी एंट्रीज होगी इन द रजिस्टर शेल बी मेड क्रोनोलॉजिकली इन रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ ईच सच अ ट्रांजेक्शन विद इन सेवन डेज ऑफ मेकिंग लोन एंड गिविंग गारंटी प्रोवाइडिंग सिक्योरिटी और मेकिंग एक्विशन Maintenance of register shall be kept by the register office of the company and shall be preserved permanently. Shall be kept in the custody of the company secretary of the company or, or any other person authorized by the board. The entry uh, the entries in the register either manual and electronic shall be authenticated by the company secretary of the company by any other person authorized by the board. Furnishing of extract from register the extract from such a register may be furnished to any member on payment of fee prescribed in the article which shall not exceed ten for each page. 
नॉन एप्लीकेबिलिटी नॉन एप्लीकेबिलिटी ऑफ सेक्शन 186 एक्सेप्ट सब सेक्शन टू सर्टेन सब ट्रांजैक्शन सेक्शन 186 टू एनी लोन मेड एंड गारंटी गिवन एंड सिक्योरिटी प्रोवाइडेड एनी इन्वेस्टमेंट मेड बाय बैंकिंग कंपनी इंश्योरेंस कंपनी हाउसिंग फाइनेंस कंपनी और इन द ऑर्डिनरी कोर्स ऑफ इट्स बिजनेस मेड बाय द कंपनी एस्टेब्लिश शुड बी ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ एंगेज इन द बिजनेस ऑफ फाइनेंसिंग इंडस्ट्रियल एंटरप्राइजेस और प्रोवाइडिंग इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर फैसिलिटी to any investment which is made by the investment company the expression investment company means the company whose principal business is the acquisition of shares debentures or other securities and a company will be deemed to be principally engaged in the business of acquisition of shares debentures or other security if it's a set in the form of investment in share debentures or other security constitute not less than that is not less than 50% se kam nahi ho not less than 50% Of its total asset, of its income derived from investment business, constitute not less than fifty percent as a proportion of its gross income, which is made in the shares allotted in percentage of section sixty-two right shares or in shares allotted in percentage of right issue made by the body corporate. The made in respect of investment lending activity by a non-banking financial company registered under this Chapter Three B of the Reserve Bank of India, nineteen ninety-four, whose principal business is acquisition of security. How there will be the restriction on the inter-corporate loan deposit to be taken by the companies registered under Section 12B, Section 186, Rule 11. A company registered under Section 12 of the Security and Exchange Board of India Act 1992 covered under such a class and classes of a company which may be notified by the central government in consultation with the Security and Exchange Board shall not take inter-corporate loan and deposit in excess of the limit as specified under regulation applicable to this kind of a company. to which it has obtained certificate of registration from the security and exchange board of india for this such a company shall furnish in its financial statement the details of the loan or deposit section 12 of the sebi act 1992 requires stock broker sub broker share transfer agent banker to issue registered to issue merchant banker underwriter portfolio manager etc to register with sebi and obtain certificate of registration there are regulation framed by sebi which regulates such entities then there comes the punishment for contravention Section 186 of the punishment shall be a sanction. Company punishable with a minimum fine of twenty five thousand and maximum five lakh. Every defaulting officer punishable with imprisonment maximum up to two years and fine with minimum twenty five thousand and maximum one lakh. Company punishable will be twenty five thousand maximum five lakh. Will be. Company who is punishable will be minimum twenty five thousand maximum five lakh. Every defaulting officer will be minimum twenty five thousand maximum officer for one lakh. The student may also refer the uh, company to the restriction on number of lands rule 2017, which have been enforced on 20th September 2017. Then comes the exemptions. So we government company. Now, one time we will see how much it is. This is the exemption. After that.